Hi guys! Welcome again. This is Sean from Deep It Up with Sean and this is the part 3 of our topic, the biological properties of the soil. For this lecture, we are going to talk about the characteristic of blue-green algae and virus. I hope you find time to watch the first two parts of this um, topic because it's also informative. And uh, if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to click the subscribe button. You can also click like if you like this video and you can always share this video to your friends who are also preparing for the upcoming board examination. If you have any questions, please leave a comment so that I can answer them and I will try my best to answer your questions as much as possible. Thank you very much and I hope you will learn something from this video. Thank you. Bye. The next group is the algae, particularly the blue-green algae or the cyanobacteria. What are cyanobacteria? Cyanobacteria are phototrophic bacteria that are important in soils where light and water are available. So meaning, pag merong liwanag, light, at saka water, yun, kadalasang present dito ay yung mga cyanobacteria. They are autotrophic eukaryotes that consist of both free-living photosynthetic bacteria and endosymbiotic organisms. The blue-green algae exists in the form of motile filaments of cells that travel away to form new colonies. Blue-green algae are found in colonial or filamentous form, and the filamentous forms show heteroresistous or non-heteroresistous filament. The heteroresists are thick-walled, large cells responsible for nitrogen fixation under anaerobic condition. So kahit walang oxygen, func functional pa rin yung mga algae. They can still live. And blue-green algae in the soil are present in a wide variety of most soils. Meaning, pag dry yung lupa mo, tuyo ang lupa mo, the blue-green algae do not thrive. Blue-green algae thrive when there is water, pagbasa yung lupa, at saka merong light. Pag dark yung soil mo, hindi siya ganun ka tumutubo. So the blue-green algae in the soil are present in a wide variety of most soils, primarily present around the plant root in the form of the symbiotic association. These organisms might either occur freely in the soil or in the form of symbiotic relationships with plants or lichen-forming fungus. Some of the common cyanobacteria include nostoc. The common is the anabena and the nodularia. Cyanobacteria have been reported from a wide range of soils, thriving both on and below the surface. The blue-green algae in soil survive at the mesophilic temperature that is sensitive to acidity, meaning mababa yung kanyang pH, and the optimum pH range is between 6.5 to 8, and water log soil conditions. What are the positive effects of blue-green algae in the soil? Cyanobacteria are among the first microbial community to colonize terrestrial ecosystems, which is the terrestrial ecosystem is a land-based community of organisms and the interaction of biotic and abiotic components in a given area. They play essential roles in soil by fixing nitrogen and carbon by the synthesis of exopolysaccharides that increase soil fertility and water retention capacity. Isa sa mga positive effect ng blue-green algae in the soil is that they use cyanobacteria, which is drought tolerant. I'm not familiar with uh, what species is that, guys. As inoculants to induce biocrust formation in the soil. And this is one of the new technology because through inoculation of um, cyanobacteria that is drought tolerant, it can restore barren degraded areas and prevent the certification process. Kung, na, kung natatandaan nyo, kanina na mention ko na blue-green algae lives in most 
moist soils. Meaning, merong tubig. Merong tubig yung lupa. Basang, basa yung lupa. But then, in this case, may mga species ngayon ng cyanobacteria, they were able to develop drought-tolerant cyanobacteria which can live in a drought area. Ibig sabihin, kahit patuyo yung lupa mo, they can still live because that is their characteristic. And because of that, because they can live in, um, kahit walang, walang tubi yung lupa mo, kahit dry yung lupa mo, this cyanobacteria, specifically the drought-tolerant cyanobacteria, are being used. They use it, uh, inoculate nila ngayon yung lupa so that they can restore Kahit pa yung mga lupa na nagiging desyerto, they can still restore it by applying or inoculating the soil with this kind of blue-green algae. And because of that, isa ito sa pinaka-importanteng um, effect technology ng blue-green algae. So there's a lot of potential for this and if we can manage to to increase their um, population of the this kind of uh, blue-green algae in desert areas, maybe there's a possibility that we, those desert areas can be used later on for crop production. And if that happens, I think that would be a great um, milestone because uh, that would be an added... added uh, area for crop production which can later on supply food for the people and they also play important roles in increasing soil physical structure porosity and retaining soil moisture due to their filamentous structure another positive effect of blue green algae is that they produce mucilaginous substances which release the phytohormones vitamins amino acids, and secondary metabolites in the soil. And many of the cyanobacterial species have the intrinsic ability to fix atmospheric nitrogen with the help of a very specialized cell called heterocyst. And the application of nitrogen-fixing cyanobacteria as a potential nitrogen biofertilizer source in the field act as an alternative to the commonly used organic and chemical fertilizers. There are still a lot of researches uh, going on uh, with the incorporation of um, blue-green algae, the, which can fix nitrogen uh, as a potential source of biofertilizer. And if it can help, it can be a good alternative um, to reduce our use of chemical fertilizers, and that will be a great reduction in terms of cost and would be beneficial for the farmers and the producers. But then we, there's also negative effects of blue-green algae in the soil. In some cases, the blue-green algae might form algal blooms, releasing toxins into the soil that directly or indirectly affects the vegetation. And the loss of a large amount of cyanobacteria community in the soil affects the bacteria communities as it causes oxygen depletion. Remember, there are some, um, we have aerobic bacteria and anaerobic bacteria. So, kung marami ngayon yung uh, cyanobacteria mo, it will affect the bacteria community because uh, they will now compete for the oxygen. And remember, uh, because these are all living organisms that use oxygen, Yung ibang mga aerobic bacteria ay namamatay kasi wala na silang oxygen na nagagamit. Now, we go to the fifth group, which is virus. Virus are genetic elements that can replicate independently of a cell's chromosomes, but not independently of cell themselves. They are smaller than bacteria and range in size from 20 to 30 nanometer in diameter. They are obligate parasites of bacteria, fungi, insect, plants, and animals 
that inhabit the soil. And they act as dormant structures or particles that can survive for a long period in different habitats. Kaya medyo mahirap siyang i-manage. And as viruses are obligate parasites, they can be found anywhere in the world where there is life. Pag merong buhay na organism, you can expect virus to be there. Remember, COVID is a virus, coronavirus. Viruses are the most abundant biological entities on our planet and exceed the number of cellular organisms in marine and soil habitats. The concentration of viruses in soil has been ent estimated to be 10 to the 9th virus particles per gram dry weight of soil. The majority of the soil viruses are tailed bacteriophage that prefer wetland forest soil over drier agricultural soils. So some of the common viruses inhabiting soil includes the viruses of this family. And some are in this family also, and which are found in the Sahara Desert surface sands. Soils act as reservoirs of viruses, but these are probably not entirely static reservoirs, as at least some viruses seem to move readily between environments. So it does not only live in, in the soil, it also lives in other, other environments. What are the positive effects of viruses in soil? The main way in which viruses in soils act beneficially is that they transfer genes between microbial hosts by horizontal gene transfer. The gene transfer enables the transfer of beneficial characteristics between different communities. So, nag isa siya sa nagiging reason sa pag-transfer ng genes from genes of beneficial characteristic between different communities. Another way that virus in soils have potential benefits for plants is that they infect organisms that are pathogenic for plants. So, ini-infect niya ngayon yung mga organisms na nagkakost ng sakit sa mga tanim. And viruses of different microbes in the soil as pathogens have an essential role in regulating the population structure of their microbial host. They also act as reservoirs of genes involved in all the biochemical functioning of their microbial host and by recombining among themselves during co-infections, which can be a source of a new gene variants. Yun nga lang, meron din namang negative effect ng virus in the soil. Among the virus community in soil, distinct proportions are plant pathogens that reach the plant via mechanical means, nematode vectors or fungal vectors, and through this, once na dumating siya sa tanim, nagkakos siya ngayon ng sakit ng mga tanim. The viruses also affect other microbial communities of bacteria, fungi, and protozoa causing an imbalance in the biotic component of the soil. And it might affect the physical and chemical properties of soil by affecting the biotic and abiotic components of the soil. Hanggang dito na lang muna para hindi masyadong mahaba yung video natin. Please watch out for the part 4 of this uh, series. And we are going to talk about protozoa and nematodes. Thank you very much for watching. Bye!